Vertex painting with height lerp is a great way to add variations to our environments. In this video, I'll first go over the height lerp nodes in Unreal Engine materials and then demonstrate how to use them with vertex painting. So let's do it. You can download the project file for this video on my Patreon. The link is in the description. Right click in the material graph and search for height lerp. Two results will come up. They're both material functions. We can double click and open them. I've already created videos about all these nodes. Check out my material nodes playlist to watch them. They both help us to lerp between two inputs based on the height data we specify. Let's start with this one. It takes 5 inputs and 3 outputs. A and B are the values we want to lerp between. They can be textures or colors. A acts as the base. Transition phase is a value between 0 and 1. When it's 0, we will see the A value. And as it increases, the B value is exposed. Up until now, it works just like the lerp node. But here's where it gets interesting. Height texture is the texture used to drive the transition. And contrast controls the smoothness of the transition between the two values. These three help us control which texture is showing. Now let's go over the outputs. Result is the final lerp of the two values. Alpha gives us the alpha of the lerp. And this one gives us the alpha without the contrast. We can use these two as the mask in a lerp or blend material attributes. Let's add two textures. I've downloaded this mask and pebble textures from Quixel. Connect the mask to the A input and the pebble to the B input. For the height texture, I'll use the pebble height. The B channel contains the height information. Let's first multiply it by a parameter. Then connect it to the height texture input. Add two parameters. Name them transition phase and contrast. And connect them like this. Connect the result output to the base color input. And I'll decrease the specular and increase the roughness to better see the material in the level. Save the material and create a material instance. Let's assign it to this cube to see how it works. By default, we see the mass or the A input. As I increase the transition phase value, the pebbles slowly start to emerge. And as you can see, the higher values of the height texture appear first. Then as we get to 1, we can only see the pebbles or the B input. When the transition phase is set to 0.5, we can use the contrast value to better control how they blend. If I set it to 2 for example, we can better see where the pebbles are. We can also use the height multiplier. Let's reset the parameters. Right now we can only see the mass. If I increase the height multiplier value, the pebbles slowly start to appear until we can only see the pebbles. We should use all three of these values to control the way it looks. The thing about the height texture is that we can use any texture we want. Although I'm using the pebble height in this case, it's not necessary to have the same height texture as the A or B inputs. For example, I can use the noise texture from the starter content. Basically, we can use any pattern we want. It shapes how the blend happens. Sometimes it's better to use the same height map as the texture, like in this case, because of the shape of the pebbles. And sometimes we can even use a simple noise, like when blending a snow with moss. In this case, the textures don't have any specific shape. So keep this in mind. Let's get back in the material. This one gives us the alpha. And this one is the alpha without the contrast. As I said before, we can use these two as a mask or the alpha. For example, if we want to layer between two textures, or if we want to blend two material attributes, I use the alpha output most of the time. This one has six inputs and four outputs, one extra input and one extra output. The diffuse inputs are like the A and the B inputs on the other node. Transition phase and contrast are also the same. High texture one controls the height of diffuse one and high texture two controls the height of diffuse two. 
Let's connect these nodes just like we connected them to the other one. I'll use the pebble texture as height texture 2 and add the mass texture for height 1. Let's multiply it by a parameter and connect it like this. Actually I should connect the B channel. This one will be height 1 multiplier and this one will be height 2 multiplier. Connect the result to base color and save the material. Create a material instance and assign it to the cube. Just like before as we increase the transition phase, the pebbles start to appear. And we can use the contrast to better modify the look. We can use these height multipliers to individually control the mass or the pebbles. Height 1 multiplier controls the mass. We can increase it to bring it up or decrease it to bring it down. And height 2 controls the pebbles. We can use all of these parameters to achieve the look we want. Keep in mind that just like the other node, we can use any pattern we want as the height textures. Let's get back in the material. This one gives us the alpha. This one is the alpha without the contrast. And this one gives us the resulting height map. Again, the alpha outputs can be really useful to use as a mask. I've opened both of these functions. Heightlerp is pretty much straightforward. The A input of the function is connected to the A input of the lerp and the B input of the function is connected to the B input of the lerp. But in the other function, heightlerp with two height maps, diffuse2 is connected to the A input, diffuse1 is connected to the B input, and the transition phase value is 1 minus. This happens to the height textures too. Height texture 1 is connected to the B input and height texture 2 is connected to the A input. As long as we use the function for both the diffuse inputs and the height data, it doesn't have any effect. But when we use the alpha outputs as the alpha for another blend, it might get confusing. In this case, we should either swap the height textures on the function or the inputs on the blend node. For example here, although the mass is connected to the A input and the pebble is connected to the B input on the blend node, we should connect the mass height to height texture 2 and the pebble height to height texture 1. So keep this in mind when using this node. Next I'll go over vertex painting, but before getting to that, make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. And if you're interested in supporting the channel and downloading the project file for this video, check out my Patreon. The links are in the description. Working with vertex paint is not that hard. Let's say we want to lerp between a red and a blue color using vertex color. I'll add a vertex color node and connect its red channel to the alpha input. Connect the lerp to the base color input. By default we see the blue color, because the vertex color gives us a value of 1. We can see it if we connect it straight to the base color input. Let's connect the lerp again and save the material. Assign the material to the mesh and select it in the level. Up here, select the mesh paint mode. We can either change the paint color to black Enable only the red channel here and start painting the red color because remember, vertex color is white by default. Or fill it with the black color, then change the color to white and start painting the blue color on the mesh. We can change the brush settings from up here to better control the painting process. Also make sure your mesh has enough vertices. We're changing the vertex colors, so we need them. Using simple lerp gives us this. As you can see the transition is too smooth and lacks detail. 
In this example, we're getting a detailed transition when vertex painting. The great thing is that we can get so many variations with only one mesh and one material. And it's relatively cheap. We may use more processing power in the shader, but it allows us to use much less memory storage because we don't need so many textures. These are all using the same mesh and the same material. Create a new material and open it. Add the mass and the pebble textures to the material. Because we want to have two materials in one material, we should make use of the material attributes nodes. I'll use a set material attributes node here. Add three array elements, base color, roughness, and normal. That's all the textures I'm gonna need. Connect them like this. The G channel of this mask texture contains the roughness. I'll use my free UV manipulation function to control the size of the textures. Watch this video to learn how to download and use it. Add a named reroute here and name it mass. I'll also add a named reroute for its height texture. Select them and press C to add a comment. Do the same for the pebble textures. Down here add a height layer. I want to use the pebble height as the height texture. So let's add it here. Multiply it by a parameter. and connect it like this. Keep in mind that when using the pebble height here, it doesn't mean that it controls the height of the pebbles. We're just using it as the pattern to lerp between the mass and the pebble. Add a parameter for the contrast and for the transition phase, I'll add the vertex color node and use its red channel. Connect the alpha output to a named reroute and name it alpha. Let's select the main material node and enable use material attributes. Then add a blend material attributes node and connect it to the main material node. Bring the mass pebble and alpha node. And connect them like this. By default we see the pebbles because vertex color outputs one. Let's check the material in the level. Apply and save. Create a material instance and assign it to your mesh. Because we want to use vertex painting, make sure the mesh has enough vertices. Select the actor and up here select the mesh paint mode. Click on paint and down here change the paint color to black. Enable only the red channel Check the brush size and the strength and click and drag on the mesh to paint the mass. We can tweak the material parameters here to better control it. If you want to have the mass by default and then vertex paint the pebbles on top of it, we can set the paint color to black and up here click on fill. Then set the paint color to white, make sure only the red channel is enabled here and start painting the pebbles. Again we can tweak the material parameters to better control it. Let's add some more control to the material. In some cases we may want to invert the height texture. For example with this brick material, I can control whether I want to have plaster in between bricks or old paint on top of them. To achieve that, we must invert the height texture and we can use the 1- minus to do that. Add a lerp node, connect the pebble height to the A input and the 1- minus node to the B input. 
For the alpha, I'll add a parameter. Name it. Run it through a saturate. And connect it to the alpha input. Now when the parameter is 0, it uses the default height. And when it's 1, it uses the inverted height. I could use a static switch node here, but using a lerp is cheaper in this case. Connect it to the multiply node and save the material. Now when the parameter is set to 0, the mass starts at the bottom. And when it's set to 1, the mass is on the top. Now let's use the other function. I'll build on top of the same materials, so duplicate and open it. In the alpha section, delete this and add the other one. Connect the vertex color and the height contrast parameter like this. We don't need to invert the height texture anymore. Rename the parameter. As I said before, because Pebble is connected to the B input here, we should connect its height to the height texture 1 input. Let's bring the mass height. Multiply it by a parameter. And connect it to the height texture 2 input. Here connect the alpha output to the named root. And it's done. Apply and save the material. Create a material instance and assign it to your mesh. Select it and go to mesh paint. Set the paint color to black. And start painting the pebbles. We can further control their blending with the parameters in the material instance. We can also set the paint color to black and click on fill. Then set the color to white and paint in the mass where we want. Let's go further and add a weathering effect on the pebbles. Duplicate the material and open it. Make some room in the pebble section. We want to add some new nodes. Multiply the albedo by a vector 3. Convert it to a parameter and name it. We should lerp between the original albedo and the result of the multiply. For the alpha, I'll use the height lerp function. Down here below the other alpha, add the height lerp node. Duplicate the height contrast parameter and connect it like this. This one will be contrast with mass and this one will be contrast weathering. Connect the G channel of the vertex color to the transition phase. Duplicate the pebble height nodes down here, connect it and rename the parameter to weathering. Connect the alpha output to a named reroute and name it alpha weathering. Then up here connect it to the alpha of the lerp. Apply and save. Create a material instance. And assign it to the mesh. Let's first fill all the channels with black. Now change the color to white and start painting the mass. Keep changing the size and the strength to create a unique result. Then enable the green channel and start painting in the weathering. 
make the weathering color darker to better see where you're adding them. Again, we can keep tweaking the parameters to better adjust the final look. Create materials like these and use them with vertex painting to better understand the process. Or you can download this project on my Patreon. In the next video, I'm gonna combine this technique with nanite tessellation. So click here to learn how to do that and thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe and join our communities on Telegram, Discord and Facebook. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. So, see you in the next one.